So I have a story to tell. When I first got interested in videography, I took a class, hoping that this would give me the skills I need. I learned some lessons from it, but then I failed to apply those lessons. First case, you guys will recall when this class started, you saw me with the camera and I was trying to do some recording. I did that in the first class, and what happened? I thought I was recording something, but my lightning was bad, my audio was bad, also the video was bad, so that video wasn't going to work. I had recorded, and I thought that was good enough for me, but it turned out that that's a recording that it's going to be likely deleted, because I can't post something like that on Blackboard or even on YouTube, because it's just lacking in terms of audio, sound, lighting, focus, formatting, um, and other few things that you'd expect to see in a professional video. So I learned the hard way. I, I did my research. I found out that why, is the, why am I having an issue with the, with the lighting? Why is it looking fuzzy? Why is it, the contrast weird and awkward? I discovered there's what you call white balance, um, and there's a card that you have to use, because when you when you take a video and you try to, or even taking a photo, um, auto white balance doesn't capture the scene itself because it's automatic. It, when there's fluctuations in light, it messes up with the, with the setting and you don't get the clearest, brightest, perfect picture that you want. So that affected my camera. And there's this card, and I, got, I learned this in video, video production, but I didn't use it. So it affected my quality, the quality of my video recording. Why did I tell you guys this story? Because I noticed that a few of you um, who are struggling, um, I've been trying to reach out to you repeatedly through mix, uh, I'm sometimes emailing you, giving you a call, and in one case, even texting, and some of you do not respond. Many of you, I'm glad, have responded. So when the class started, I met Claire of what we're going to do in the class. I made clear how the instructions will look. And I've been recording all my instructions, especially, and documenting it carefully. So one way you see my instructions is, is through what you call the Assignments and Projects tab. I made it clear that many of you can do this, so this is probably going to be a rare. So I mean, like, this is going to be, like, I'm, I'm just, sounding like a broken record now. I'm not going to review all the steps. And I also said where you can find the assignment instructions and cross materials, the agenda for the day. Now, I'm going to say this. I've called you all to sit with your peers because I want you all to move forward in the class and not backwards. Unfortunately, it happens that quite a number of you who have been sitting at the back, you're the ones struggling the most with instructions, unfortunately. So, I don't want you to sit at the back anymore, so you guys are going forward, not backwards. On that note, I want to turn to a question that I like to ask my students. And the question is this. You probably saw this coming, but uh, I want to ask this, how are you guys doing? Well, that's a good question. I am... Um, so, you can, you can answer the way you want, but I, I like to know how students are doing in response to, maybe you have questions. Just take one, pass it down. If you have questions about the class, questions about the assignment, or just questions in general for me. Now, I should, if you, if you exhaust the, fla the space on that flashcard, um, you can always write at the back. But I'd like you to hold on to that flashcard because there's gonna be another activity in which I'm gonna ask you to respond um, to a question that I'm gonna ask you later on in the class. So, if you fill out the front, so the question I have for you is this, how are you doing? Number two, 
Do you have any specific questions for me? And number three, you can make any notes that you want for the third question. I leave it open. Um, so once again, try to fill out the front. If, if you exhaust space there and you write at the back, that's fine. I can always give you another one. Because there's going to be another activity, and in that activity, I'm going to ask you to write at the back. Okay? So take like two minutes, or, or let's say two, between two and four minutes to write it down. So if you just, um, I'll pass this out later. So, okay? Do I need to clarify the question? So the first is, how are you doing? Second is, any questions for me? And third is, make a note of your own observation or perhaps anything you want to tell me. And when you're done, hold on to it because there's yet going to be another activity in which I'm going to ask you to use that card. I passed out, okay, I see there's some extras here. Is there a sign sheet? Yeah, I'll pass it out soon. So, just for now, just right now, yeah, over there. Just, that's, uh, I updated the course calendar, so I wanted students to have one, so that's just, yeah, so I'll give it to the next person who shows up. All signed in? Do you all sign in? Okay. So once you're done with that, just hold on to it. Um, just leave it down there. So if we have any other person join us, we'll, they will just have to sign that in. So I want to make reference to, to the group project. I watched the video, um, your videos. I thought you, you, you all did a great job on the slides. I haven't analyzed in terms of the contents, in terms of how you responded to the assignment instructions, but from what I saw so far, uh, you, you guys put in a lot of effort. In terms of the feedback I've given, I, I, I typically do this by giving students, I have a video that I've recorded, but I have not, I just describe my feedback process so here's just an example of how I give feedback. And I'm looking at one of the final project assignments, instruction um, assignment that was completed in one of my uh, English 101 classes. Interesting. Houston, we've got a problem. Uh, words. I hate when this happens, but it's happened to me before. Why am I not able to close it? Okay, so I, I try to give st feedback by what writers would call sentence level edits or paragraph level edits. So I, I, give, I, I do this because I want you guys to see what's wrong with a certain sentence or what's wrong with a particular paragraph. Now this is a final draft, so I didn't have a lot of 
like sentence level edits or corrections. Um, but if you guys are getting feedback from me, you should be seeing everything like margin comments. Because um, it, it would be foolish of me to, to say, see my comments attached, and then there's nothing attached in the document, unless I made a mistake. So when I say that I've left you guys comments or feedback, then I've left you guys comments or feedback. And if you're not seeing it, you should reach out to me. Now, if you say nothing, um, then that, that I'm under the assumption that maybe you just didn't take my comments and perhaps you just wanted to do your own thing. Um, so that's one note on feedback. Uh, another note on, feed, on, on English composition um, when it comes to grading is that some professors use rubric. I've taken classes, even um, I'm an adult student, I just, just take classes for fun. And there are professors who choose to use rubric. And they say, this is what an A paper is. And um, if you, I don't know if you guys, you've seen this, that professors who just copy and paste and say, hey, this is what your paper has. This is what you need to do. But they don't get in, they don't like get into your paper and make corrections to your sentences or paragraph. I've had professors like that. That's not my style because I think I need to show students what is wrong. I, I prefer more hands-on, not just tell them that, hey, your paper has got some fragments and this and that. I get into the paper by editing and saying, hey, this is where a fragment is. It's a style of mine. And some professors just like dump rubric on students and copy and paste. So this is what an A paper is. This is what a C paper is. So you can have an idea. Sometimes when I read a paper, I can, I can tell if this is an A paper or a, C, a B paper. And I can just give a student a letter grade. And, I, and you wonder, what? where did that come from? Well, if you have a familiarity understanding of rubric, you can understand what, kind of, what is expected when you see an A paper or a B paper. So grading is not random, at least for me. Um, when I give an assignment, I lay out specifications that this is what I want to see. So speaking of which, if you complete the assignment, then you do what I want to see. If you so when I started teaching, or when I was training to be an English composition instructor, I, I had a, a mentor. Um, she teaches at uh, College of Lake County. And uh, she taught me some, a few things about teaching and English especially English instruction and teaching. And one of the things she taught me is this formula. So whenever you're writing a summary, um, this is a formula that I always teach students or show students. Um, as you can see, T st stands for type of text. And the other T stands for title. A is author's name. And V is verb. And T is the main idea. So if you're summarizing, if you're summarizing, um, especially, you need to have this feature. Of, many of you, I think, I'd say half of you can do this well, but a couple of you still struggle. So I, I had this presentation in week, uh, week four. Um, again, like I said, I can't control what you do from your homes. I can't control what you do using your time when we're not meeting in person. But what I can say is that if you're not being, uh, I use this word a lot, an active student, I can tell. One way I know who an active student is is that they don't go through the materials. And then they say, you know, I don't know what is going on in the class. So that always leaves me with, with worries because I'm, I begin to think. It's like taking your car to the mechanic and you tell the mechanic, I don't know what's wrong with my car. Can you help me? What do you think the mechanic is going to do? Mechanic is going to ask you a series of questions. Okay, tell me what happened. Did you drive somewhere? Did you drive into the ditch? Um, did somebody do something to your car? You know, they, they need questions. So if a student comes to me and say they don't know what's they're struggling, they don't know what to do to complete an assignment, you need to tell me first where you've been. What have you been doing in the class? Where did you encounter difficulty? If you don't tell me that and you just say I don't know. I don't know where to find the assignment. I don't know how to complete the assignment. That leaves me with a question mark regarding your activity, or should I say your status as an active student in the class. Because if you're telling me that where, what you've been trying to do, and I've had a couple of you who have reached out to me. I can speak. Um, if I mention your name, it doesn't, and I don't mention your name, it doesn't mean that you're not an active student. But because, again, it's only eight weeks. But I've, I've, I know Ilana, she's, she's been very, she pays very careful attention to instructions. 
Um, it's just not the only one, there are a couple of you, but I could speak of this because um, she had an issue and she reached out to me and, and I know um, I could speak very, very well of that. Um, if I don't mention your name, it doesn't mean that you're not active. Um, but I say this because I want to bring to your attention that some of the things you do, we're doing right now, I've already responded to them. Um, but so I, I want to draw attention to this because I notice when it comes to uh, your, your paper, particularly the uh, character analysis paper, there was a struggle with citing sources. So let's say, I'm, I'm doing this as a demonstration. So write one, okay? You don't need a comma here, that's wrong. And if you're saying the name for the first time, what, what happens? You put the full name. You guys know that, right? I mean, just, just a refresher, ELA. But then you don't have to go on repeating. Unless you mention the name um, somewhere in the paragraph. So there are different nuances. But that's just one point of correction. Um, our course textbook has tons of samples and ways you can cite your sources. Okay. Um, here I've already, this is probably, I don't have a page number for this because this is probably something from the internet. Um, although if it's from a book, I need a page number. So this is from a video, so I, 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 didn't, I just referenced the video. Some people will put the um, exact time, like 0 0.5 minutes, but I don't do that. You know, I, it's just, you just reference the video, okay? The reason I say this is because, again, this is just some, my old classes. I want you guys to make good use of the textbook. There are m multiple samples on how you can go about citing how you can go about analyzing. Um, the ACIC has got its own resources, but that's not our focus for today. If you are interested in writing, especially professional writing, just know that there are some rules that I didn't set. It's just the way it's, 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 it's done. I mean, in professional writing, it's expected that you cite your sources. I had an incident of plagiarism in this class, and I have to say I'm disappointed that the student decided to plagiarize. I won't mention the student's name. I'll try to protect the students. Um, who can tell me what plagiarism is? Huh? Yeah. So in the clearest example of plagiarism, somebody goes on the internet and just finds things and then they submit it to me. I usually tell this story, I had this very weird case of plagiarism, not in this class, but doing something I didn't ask you to do. Obviously that paper is going to fall somewhere, it depends, maybe B or C. I mean, you just read this, it says that there's expectations when it comes to writing. So just because I don't dump rubrics on you, it doesn't mean I'm, I'm, I, I look at, I have an understanding of what a B or C or A paper is. So have that in mind when you complete assignments in this class that there are expectations. And when I give feedback on your paper, I expect that you think about it or consider this feedback and apply them. And if you cannot, um, you cannot open these documents or have issues accessing the documents, accessing the documents, then you need to let me know. We will be having a library session for those of you who, if you didn't hear at the beginning, so it's D258. Um, when it's time, we we'll all will walk down there. It's kind of like a maze trying to find that place. So I will let you guys. How many of you have ever heard of this formula? TTVAT formula. Okay, I'll teach you something new. In another, in my, this was during the pandemic. A student plagiarized in an essay, and everything was taken from the internet. The only thing the student did not plagiarize was was her name, her first name. Everything was like I'm like, come on. If you, I'm not saying you should get creative in plagiarizing, but if you're going to plagiarize and you just copy something, everything from the, it's like. 
Whew, I mean, well, I can tell. I can tell. Um, so I have a bunch of ways I can tell when students plagiarize. And I try to make it difficult for students to plagiarize by creating complicated assignments. Like when I'm giving you themes, like stuff. Like I know that when many of these, like, where have you been, where are you going, that has been annotated several times. I mean, you could find that on the internet, but you're not going to find the type of assignment I create on the internet. So if you go on, if you go on the internet and you just copy and, yeah, what you're going to end up doing is summary. And I didn't ask you guys to do summary, so I, I, that's how I catch students. So I've just tell you, that's one way I catch students, because you do something I didn't ask you to do. And when you do something I asked you to do, I'm asking, why did you do this? Because it's easier for you to, to take that route, because that route is what's on the internet. So plagiarism is an instance when you take somebody else's idea and you pass it on as your own. It's a sense of deception. It's a sense of that you're trying to say, this is my work. Grade me for my work. But it's not your work. It's actually text. And uh, the consequence for that is, if I choose to escalate it, I could take it to the dean. But I, rather, I don't want to go that route. To me, it's not worth it. Um, so uh, plagiarism is just if you fail the paper. And if, based on, it's, it depends on the case, case by case. It's, it depends on the case. Um, if it's blatant plagiarism, that's, very, that's, that's just straight F. Um, if it's accidental plagiarism, I could take out some points. And so that's how I resolve it. So, I'm going to say this, like, I try as much as possible to make it difficult for students to plagiarize. But notwithstanding, there are instances when students uh, do what they want to do by going on the internet, and uh, they think that they're trying to outsmart the professor. Tony, you have a question? Yeah, what do you mean by accidental plagiarism? Accidental plagiarism, that's a good, it's good that you, you right. raise that question, because I think the question then that follows is that, does that mean somebody goes on the internet? and uh, find something accidentally? Or wasn't it done with intent? So how can that be accidental? Um, accidental, the way I would define it or qualify it is that you just, you didn't, you didn't cite your sources. Like I said, um, using the TTVAT formula is one method. If you reference the author, if you reference the article, then I know where you got it from. But then if you didn't do this thing where you put in quotes and number, that could qualify as and you, or if you didn't put quotations around it. Well, it, that could be, I mean, it depends on, and some of you, a couple of you did that in your, in your character analysis assignments. I mean, like you just, I know, I, I know it's like you didn't copy from the internet, it's just you're quoting, but you didn't put quotes around it, or you didn't reference the, the author. One example I saw is the author, of the, the author of the short story says that, say the name of the author, don't just say the, the, the author, you know, a couple of you did, and some of you who did this, you did very well, it's just that you were doing things that, it's not the professional way of doing citing. Um, so when you, when, you, when, you, some, when you summarize, you also you have to use auto tags. How many of you know of auto tags? Auto tags. I need to open that presentation again. Do you guys know what auto tags is? Huh? I, I think a, lot of you, a bunch of you know what it is because you did, especially those of you who, so auto tags is like, credit when you give the auto, auto reference. So you say something like, um, Carol Oates says, Carol Oates argues, Richard writes notes. Um, you're using report, reporting verbs, but you're also citing the author's name. So when you summarize, that's something you're gonna have to make good use of, auto tags. If that's missing, and you're just saying, the author says that, page one, page one did not say it. It's the author who say, mentioned the author's name. Um, so don't say, page one says that. So some of this it goes back to summary. When you write, when you're summarizing somebody or summarizing an article, you've got to use this in the basic sense. If you, I, I, I promise you, if you guys know something about it, the, the TTVAT formula, I think it helps you with summarizing and you don't get into all this trouble with plagiarism. To, to use Tony's term, uh, to use accidental plagiarism, so if you use this, um, I think it helps you to avoid type of text, verb, author, thesis. Forgot the other one. Title, title, title. Okay. All right. So that's. When you use auto tags and like write. 
And the way people get around auto text is to use like pronouns like he or she says this or says that, you know. Uh, many of you can do this, but I notice a few of you are struggling with that. Now, I want to turn our attention to, to the next activity, which is this. So, on the flashcard I've given you. So, Ilana, if you don't mind, just close that laptop for now. There'll be time when you can use it. Okay, thank you. So here's what I want you to do. What's funny, Tony? Did you win the lottery? Yeah. Excited about Thanksgiving? Yeah. You're going to be cooking? Okay. Make sure you reserve my turkey. I'm just kidding. No. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So. Huh? We'll bring you an apple. <laughs> All right. Um, let's, let's, let's turn our attention to, we're going to talk about politics. Well, actually, this is what I want you to do. So, on the flashcard I've given you, if you have enough space, flip over to the blank space, and this is what I want you to do. Who's your favorite politician? Don't be shy. It could be anybody. Just say it. What do you like? That's number one. The question is, who's your favorite politician? And number two, what do you like about them? And number three, what, in your own opinion, makes this person or that person stand, stand out? Huh? Could this person be dead? It could be anybody. It could be alive, dead. So why did you not have one? You don't have any? Okay, then put the one you hate the most. Wait, was it last? Was it okay, last? let me start again. Who's your favorite politician? What is their name? His name or a name? What do you like about this person? What makes this person stand out? Okay. Should I repeat again? Or you guys got it? Okay. So, what's the name of your favorite politician? What's the name of it? What do you like about them, this person? And then, last question is, what makes this person stand out to you? Because they're funny? Is it because... Uh, I don't know, you know, no right or wrong answer. So I always tell students I don't really, I don't get into partisan politics, but it's just, this is just an activity. You don't have to put that down because I opened the video, but uh, all done? Huh? Okay. So, anyone wants to share what they put down? I would say my response, like, I like certain aspects of politicians. I wouldn't, should I say their favorite, my favorite? I don't know if I have any favorite, because sometimes when I read years later about them, I like, I detest, I don't like certain things that they did. But I'm not going to get into that aspect, but like, one thing I would say is that uh, I have an admiration for Obama's speaking skills. Doesn't mean that I, I'm a Democrat. Doesn't mean that I, that, uh, I believe in all his policies. I also have an admiration for, who was that? Um, trying to think, Kennedy. This is a Democrat, he's a Democrat as well. But I also like Ronald Reagan too. I like the way he carried himself, like the way he, he engaged in, in public speaking. Okay. That's just me, okay? Um, I'm not gonna play all this video, but I'm gonna, Summarize. Anyone wants to share? Oh, I great. said Reagan as well. Okay. What'd you like about him? I said the 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 want to keep the nuclear family. Mm -hmm. Then I said his speeches because mm -hmm. he's just roasts people silently. Yeah. Um, and then the, what was the middle one? 
one. What do you like about him? I think you already just, he, he has a sense of humor. And then what makes him stand out mm -hmm. the last one? Uh, I don't know. We can he's say. Funny guy. I, uh, I think that um, I mean, if, if you guys research this, um, what you said about, I agree with that because I, I was watching something on Ronald Reagan and it's like, you know, he, got, he was almost assassinated. And when doctors were attending to him, probably these are liberal leaning doctors, he said to the doctor, please tell me that you're a Republican. <laughs> you died. <laughs> I thought that was funny. I thought it was a funny joke, but I mean, he's got a sense of humor. When Ronald Reagan, by the way, jo Joseph Bi Biden, just became the oldest United States president ever. So when Ronald Reagan was running, um, at one point he was asked this question. Uh, I mean, somebody asked him a question about um, him, he being old and running for office, and he said something to this effect. I don't want to take advantage of my opponent's uh, maturity or immaturity or youthfulness. I think he used that word. In other words, saying that he being old, an older president, older guy, he's mature, he's wise, he's got wisdom. But he just found a way, he, he's, he has the gift of, he's just a very charismatic guy. Now that's just uh, Ronald Reagan. I'm going to just 